Hi everybody, my name is Shannon and welcome to another yarn. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time, you're in for a treat. We're talking nostalgia here, vintage stuff, knitting, crocheting, etc. There's a lot of people right now on YouTube that are getting tagged to talk about what's your oldest skein of yarn that you have in your stash and what's your oldest pattern book, book, magazine, etc. What do you have? So I thought I'd play along and I'm going to tag some people too. Lori from the Armchair Chef, you are tagged. Erin, Crafting Kitty, you are also tagged. And Amanda, Tat Mama in the Beg Brigade, you're also tagged. So all three wonderful creators, what's your oldest skein of yarn? What's your oldest pattern book? Let's see who's got who beat. I don't know. Erin, uh, I'm definitely tagging you because you tagged me in the 20 songs music event. I couldn't think of 20. I, I listened to music. I just couldn't think of the name. So that's why I didn't play along. Uh, no offense on that one. So let's get into it. I have some pretty old yarns. I really do. I've been collecting yarns for decades. I have some hand dyed wool yarn that I used to weave with, but it's in a box and I just don't want to dig it down. But I have some other stuff that I recently got at the thrift store for nostalgia reasons. This is just dazzle air. Look at this. This is a 100% acrylic. Look at that fuzz. Oh my God. This was the height, man. I'm telling you, when I was a child, this was the bougie yarn. This was just the creme de la creme. You know, it, when I was little, you could get yarn in a lot of different department stores. As a matter of fact, this one was bought originally from J.C. Penney. It was. This thing has got to be 30 plus, well, probably 40 years old. It could easily be 40 years old because that's when I was buying with my mom. And when the yarns would go on sale, this, when, when the Azzle Air went on sale by Wintuck, that was the cream of the crop, man. I'm telling you, you were just like, you make a sweater in this, you were rich. That's just all there was to it, this stuff. So I had to have it. I mean, it, it looks the same as when I was a kid. It really does. It, it, it hasn't changed. I make something out of this. This will go to my great grandkids. I already got grandkids, right? This, I'm telling you, this stuff will be around. It, just no doubt. This stuff is amazing. So, again, it's an acrylic. If you have any in your stash, it's a four ply uh, acrylic. I don't know what the yardage or white. Imagine that it's white. This was bought J.C. Penney. Fantastic. And the other yarn that I grabbed, got this one at the thrift store too. I have a bunch of this in my stash, so I didn't really need to get it at the thrift store. I just, you know, I got it because of the tags. This is Luster Sheen. You see what I'm wearing? Do you see this? That's what this is made out of. This thing right here that I'm wearing is pushing 10 years old. This stuff does not age. I have multiple skeins of this and different colors already in my stash, and it doesn't look any different than this. I mean, it just, it doesn't age. It doesn't wear, it just works. So this was purchased originally at Lee Ward's in Denver for $1.39. I'm not 100% sure how old this particular skein is, but when's the last time you saw something for $1.39, right? And that Lee Ward's, they've been out of business for how long? Yeah. But if you have any of this in your stash, use it. I made a top for my daughter when she was about 12 years old that her daughter wore. Made out of this, and trust me, my daughter didn't take care of it. It was on the floor a lot, it got trampled, it got washed and dried and everything else looked the same. We finally ended up just giving it to Goodwill. Let somebody else love it. I mean, it looked fine. There was nothing wrong with it. That stuff will outlast you. If you have some of this in your stash, make something with it. It will last to your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren as long as they don't take scissors to it because nothing else is going to destroy it. This stuff is amazing. So yarns nowadays, not quite like that, but there you go. So I also wanted to bring up some patterns that I have. I have some older patterns too, but I wanted to show some for me personally that are just such nostalgia, such memory lane. This one, it's a 1980s book booklet from Red Heart. Look at that. This was mine. 1980s. You have no idea how many times this little girl, yeah, 
sat there and just looked and dreamed about all of these things. Look at this. I mean, I would, I would work on this. That one was something special. I mean, this one right here, the top is thread crochet and the bottom is yarn. Uh, didn't really play with gauge and stuff when, uh, when I was younger. I did what I could. So this thing right here, this one is a little baby bunting. That was my first knit project. I taught myself how to knit when I was a little girl. Now the pattern in here, again, this is the 1980s, 1980 um, craft book. So the pattern in here, this was my first project and it said reverse your shaping. So you made it, made it in one half right here and it was seamed right here and then reverse your shaping for the other side. Well, I didn't have any knitters or anything along that line around me that could help me and get to where I understood what that meant. So I made two pieces exactly alike. So when you sewed it together, one side of the little bunting was in stockinette, the other side was in purl stitch. If I wanted to do it again, I would have to make two more pieces exactly alike and then I could have one that was all knit and purl, you know. So that frustrated me. I did sew it together, you know, the asymmetrical and the back and forth wasn't really popular at that point. It wasn't how I wanted it. So I set my knitting down for decade plus. I did it, I mean, that's a pretty interesting little bunty, bunting, and I made it, but I preferred crocheting. I mean, crocheting was just definitely my number one love. Um, just, I mean, going through here, look, you got a Ken doll and everything with the outfit. You have no idea. I spent hours. This thing was, I, I just, I read the patterns like they were the best novel ever. And I would go through and just look at those designs and I'm making those things. You know, who else made things for their Barbie and their Ken, right? I mean, didn't we all do that as kids? But this was wonderful. So some of the other stuff I learned, this is a 1982 magazine, August of 1982, Crochet Fantasy, the premier number one issue. That's right. I had every issue for quite a few years. But this was mine, this was in my name, sent to me, 1982. And I would just go through here and just the, the doilies, the, I mean, just the amazing stuff. And I, I learned with thread crochet. I mean, I did a lot of thread crochet as a child. The patterns are like this, okay? So when people talk about that with the charts and the graphs nowadays, that's, that's what I grew up with. Uh, the, these patterns will, start and they'll talk about the couple first couple rounds and then after that they say follow the graph look at those designs man i'm telling you i wanted to make those puffy sleeves I, it's just i mean you know the the different years are coming back we could definitely come back and make a couple of these look at the collars aren't those cute i mean you know obviously dated it is in the 80s but that's that's just a lot of fun who else wanted to make curtains I mean, it, it's fun. So this was the premiere issue, but my favorite one was issue number two. This thing got a lot of love. Look at that. Look at that poor magazine, man. It has just been through the ringer. And what I did, I have a name in it. I wrote my name in it, right? Very proud, that, that type of thing. So all of these different doilies and runners and things along that line, when I got to the instructions, at one point in my life, I wanted to make all of them. So I didn't make every one of them, but I wrote in there. There's a little handwriting as a little kid did. Yep, I did that one, you know, and, and I went through and it's like, well, which one did I do? Well, I did number three and I, I just, this is what I did. I lived out in the country. We had uh, ducks and chickens and geese and like a min little mini farm. We didn't kill anything. Um, yeah, I did that one, right? I mean, this is so memory lane. Um, but this is this is really what I did. Oh, I did all four of them here, right? These must have been like little coasters or something, but I did all of those. Yeah, uh, preteen, preteen, right? Why not? Let's go have fun. Oh, look, I did the train. Look at that. Filet crochet, I did the train. Had marked down rows and everything else. That's fun. Did that one. I did a lot in this book, right? This was back in the day where you got a book and you actually worked with it and you made things and it wasn't just inspiration. Oh, another filet crochet. I did that one too. 
How much fun is this? What a trip. I, I, I did a majority. I did that one. I did a majority of these. This is kind of crazy. So there's some tablecloths in here. There's the runners in here. I liked that one. I don't think I ever did that one. I drooled over it and I wanted to, but I didn't do that one. I did a lot. I had a, this one. I did a bunch. I did that one quite a few times and just the fun stuff, right? I mean, you have to have fun in life. And that's what I work with is doing stuff like that. I, and again, I, I have some older stuff too. I found this one, this one, um, I believe might have uh, belonged to my grandmother. I looked on the inside of this and this is copyright 1948. So I do have a good collection of some really old out of print items. This was a uh, Coates J and P book number 241, 10 cents for this. And just all sorts of, look at those, aren't those pretty? Just fun stuff. I absolutely adorable. Oh, back when people actually decorated their furniture, right? I never did that, but it's, you, you could, I mean, you, you know, doilies are pretty cool. I made quite a few, but I bought quite a few too, right at the thrift store. The bedspreads. One year, my dad, we had, we had a couple horses and uh, he wanted to breed one of the horses. And there was a neighbor down the road that had a stud and it was a $150 stud fee that they were charging to breed the horses. Well, I made a bedspread. I can't remember exactly what size. I don't know if it was a twin or a double or what size it was for, but she wanted a bedspread. So I made the bedspread and it was supposed to be a trade for the, uh, the stud fee. So $150. And I made that as a teenager, as a young teenager, using um, a crochet thread. I think it's a little bit bigger than a number 10. Made the full beds with carpet warp. Yeah, like a weaving thing. And made that and was able to do the trade for that purpose. Um, so you know, crafting and selling and bartering with my crafts has just been in my blood since a very, very young age. I couldn't imagine not being able to touch the yarn and create something and dream about what it'll be one day when you start working with it. And, and that doesn't matter whether it's crochet or a knit. Like I said, I taught myself how to knit as a young girl, but it didn't resonate with me then. And I tend to do more knitting now than I do crocheting. They both have their uses. They're both beautiful. They're both creating a gorgeous fabric with your very own hands. Uh, knitting, obviously, two sticks and some string, and you make something amazing. Crocheting, you got a bent hook and some string, and you're doing the same thing. I mean, what better way to do things? I, I like to tell people at work, um, people like to tear everyone down, right? You know, it's it's sad, but in our life, everyone likes to tear somebody down, tell tell talk about them, say things behind their back. That's not what I do. I go home and I create things. I take my hands and I make something and I create something. And I think that's what everyone here does too, is you're taking something from nothing and you're creating and you're bringing beauty into the world. I think that's what we're meant to do. And that's what I love about this YouTube channel because we're able to share these things and, and the beauty that we've done and give somebody else other ideas and bring those things up and even this I saw other people being tagged with what's your oldest skein of yarn what's your oldest magazine and that's just a small snippet I have a library and every time I go sit down and I look at that it's memory lane this is to me it's more than a photo album it, it I, I remember when I got that, you can see when I'm flipping through the pages and seeing my, my, my poor penmanship and wrote did on the books. And uh, I made those things. And it, that brings me back to childhood. Uh, grabbing a piece of yarn that is that old brings me back to childhood. It brings me back to those memories and things along that line. And I hope it does that to you too, that it can transport you into that, those happy times and those blessed times. And you can share those things with others. That's my philosophy anyway. Let me know what yours is. Thank you everyone. This has been such a joy. 
and I'll talk with you later. Bye-bye.